All right, take a look at this. Live conditions right now along our coastline at Kill Devil Hills. Yeah, Debbie making its return to land, triggering tornado warnings for several coastal cities and towns overnight. This look, this live look, though, things look relatively calm in this spot. Literally the calm before the storm. Perhaps, yeah. Good morning, folks. It's Thursday, August 8th. I'm Charles Perez. And I'm Katie Killen. And I'm Gracie Matisse. Some of the video that we are getting in uh, this morning showing major damage uh, from high winds, flooding, of course, that we've seen. Uh, but it is a little distressing to see, I've got to say, right here in North Carolina. All right. Yeah, and unfortunately today uh, likely will bring significant flooding towards parts of North Carolina as Debbie continues to move north. We had that second landfall early this morning, right about 2 o'clock this morning around Bowles Bay in South Carolina. That is just north of the Charleston area. And uh, hard to believe it, but uh, you'll remember that first landfall that happened on Monday morning about 7 a.m. right there at the Big Bend of Florida. And that uh, storm has not moved much since that first landfall. Uh, we are still looking at uh, the threat for that heavy rain today across the Carolinas. Those heavier rain showers extend right now from Wilmington back towards the Raleigh area right along I-40 towards Greensboro and Charlotte. Uh, also waking up to some of those heavier bands of rain. We are right on the edge of that. We do have some drier air in place though across the western Carolinas. want to point out though something that we are going to be feeling at times today. That is the wind. We've already seen those winds uh, picking up over the last hour or so. Now, here we go. Some of that uh, outer rain shield now making its way into parts of the Carolinas excuse me, Western Carolinas and the upstate. Temperature wise this morning, we have the clouds above and we are in the 70s, kind of a warm and muggy start to the day. And I think the Asheville area we're in line for maybe some off and on showers throughout the day. Higher chances of rainfall, though, no doubt will be to the east of I-26 towards uh, Marion and McDowell County. We could see some of those heavier bands of rains at times. And that chance of rain will continue into the evening time. We're continuing to track Debbie's impacts, and I'll show you the latest rainfall totals coming in straight ahead. And your time right now, 533 here, taking a look uh, at your screen. The Asheville metro area, all green, no major issues in that spot. I-26 eastbound portions of it closed this morning uh, because of that ongoing construction. There are detours there in place. So just a heads up if you're traveling that way. We do expect the DOT to reopen those lanes here uh, in about 30 minutes or so at 6 a.m. So we'll keep you posted on what happens there. Gracie. Well, from the live desk, Debbie causing devastation in more ways than one across the Carolinas. We want to show you a live look at Raleigh this morning. You can see a little bit of rain on the camera there. Debbie bringing more devastation to parts of North Carolina this morning. This is what is left of Springfield Middle School in Lucama, east of Raleigh. I mean, you can see piles of bricks on the ground there. Uh, this entire wall blown out of the building metal warped on the ground as well. Uh, in addition to uh, that damage, considerable flooding expected across parts of southeast North Carolina with an additional three to nine inches expected. With that threat of flooding, officials are urging residents to heed warnings. The sound, the force, it was uprooting trees. Those are messages that we try to tell people is the water is dangerous. Don't don't walk through floodwaters, don't drive through floodwaters. You know, again, six inches can float a car. Well, power outages ticking up since our last check. They're now at over 65,000 just here in North Carolina. Coming up in under 15 minutes, we'll tell you about funding already approved to deal with the mess left behind from Debbie. That's the latest from the live desk. In our state, we're all too familiar with rain and flooding that comes from slow moving storms. So preparation now means saving lives later. And that was Governor Roy Cooper speaking yesterday about Debbie making landfall again this morning, increasing a major flood threat across the Carolinas. It still poses a major flood threat for parts of the coast. The center of Debbie was just offshore of South Carolina overnight, about 25 miles northeast of Charleston and 65 miles southwest of Myrtle Beach. Also, an outer band of Tropical Storm Debbie spawned a tornado that ripped through a part of Sampson County, destroying two homes and an assisted living facility. It happened yesterday. The National Weather Service placed the region under a tornado warning 
right before it hit. It was the first severe storm or tornado warning spawned in North Carolina off the bands of Tropical Storm Debbie. And the Asheville Fire Department has deployed a team to the coast to further help agencies there in their response to the tropical storm. That team is ready to go in Williamston. News 13's Nija Pettyhome checked in with them last night as they prepare for what Debbie may bring. Fire Department. Crews from the mountains have arrived in Williamston to help with the flooding rescues. They arrived Tuesday night and are in place and ready to go. We're there to help someone that can't help themselves if their house is flooded or their, their neighborhood's flooded out. The 16-person crew from the Astro Fire Department is in Williamson, which is northeast of Greenville, to help with the tropical storm response. Wesley Rogers, the chief of special operations, says that they are ready to go when they get the call. This morning we uh, didn't have any deployment missions, so we did training until around lunchtime. Just surveying the area, making sure we're ready to go if they need us. So when we, when we deploy, we're required to be self-sustainable for 72 hours. You can see here the crew has set up their gear. They are fully equipped with the rescue boats to respond to any and all emergencies. We have the capabilities to take boats um, with motors or paddle craft into the neighborhoods and get them out if they can't help themselves. They could be in the field for as long as seven days. They wait as the condition worsens. They're expecting some heavy rains tonight. and We just got word a little while ago that potential for a tornado is increased for this area. We have the opportunity to do this because we get to work with uh, North Carolina Emergency Management. Deploy is a resource for them to help locals like we are here in Williamston. I'm Nisha Pettingholm, News 13. And once again here, just a little perspective for you on Tropical Storm Debbie. This storm really has not moved much over the last couple of days, especially when you consider that it first made landfall as a Category 1 hurricane on Monday. That second landfall happening today. Uh, early this morning, just north of Charleston, of course, uh, only a couple hundred mile difference there. Uh, now, today, that heavy rain does move into North Carolina, and we could be looking at uh, some of those showers trying to make a run on our region off and on throughout the day as well. Otherwise, uh, temperatures will be cooler, at least for most of us. The exception is going to be our western mountains where we'll see more sunshine, less chance of a rain there, and uh, temperatures could end up near 90 degrees for areas around around uh, Bryson City towards Robbinsville and Andrews. Continuing to track the latest with uh, Debbie, I'll have the latest rainfall totals coming up. And still ahead, an update on a story we've been following for you. The latest on what happened after a fiery crash killed two along I-26. And now, your News 13 Skywatch weather. Well, we've already seen Debbie battering parts of the Carolinas over the last couple of days. And now we could be looking at some local impacts here across the Western Carolinas as well. Now, the good news for us, the impacts will be fairly low overall. And we're going to be on the edge of that rain shield. I think that we could end up with some uh, fairly impressive rainfall totals for areas out to the east of I-26. However, you get towards the west of I-26 and some areas will completely miss out on that moisture altogether. Flooding risks fairly low for us, but something that we will be watching uh, down towards uh, the eastern edges of McDowell County into Burke County and then uh, potentially even uh, portions of Mitchell and Avery County as well. I think the more widespread impacts today will be felt with wind gusts occasionally up to about 25 to 30 miles per hour out there this afternoon. Here's a look at radar this morning. Again, that heavy rain is sitting off to our east. Want to show you that view there from Oak Island Pier. This is, of course, uh, an area along the coast that has uh, seen some of that heavy rainfall for the last couple of days. That rainfall continues there this morning. I want to pull things back. Debbie's still a pretty powerful tropical storm as it now moves north across uh, South Carolina and that heavy rainfall this morning and flooding threats extend uh, really from Raleigh back towards the Greensboro area. Everything you see there, that is a flood warning. We also have that tornado watch that continues until later on this morning, and that's going to include those areas along the coast. 